Hello everybody, Steve Griffiths here, developer of the MT Predictor software program. In today's MT Predictor video, I'd like to take a look at how sometimes markets can be very frustrating. And that's just the reality of the way markets unfold in the real world. Before we get to the example, I just want to remind you that all examples in these videos should be considered as hypothetical. No trades are actually taken, they're just shown for illustration and training purposes only. Remind you there's a risk of loss in trading and investing. That's what we'll be looking at in today's uh, video. And as such, all traders must accept, but more importantly, understand that losses can and will and do unfold, no matter what trading approach you take. So I just want to look at the USE minis, in particular the ES and the NQ on three and 15 minute charts yesterday. So I just want to first start in by the ES. For those of you who are new to MT Predictor, will know that we don't blindly take our uh, setups or uh, all of the setups we basically wait till the picture becomes clear and to do this we go to a higher time frame chart a higher time frame chart would be a time frame between three and five time frames higher so if you're trading a three minute chart this would be a 15 minute if you're say trading daily stocks it would be a weekly if you're stay, say trading forex or perhaps an hourly chart it would be the four hourly chart so I just want to use our trading mode and jump back to earlier in the um, on this chart here, on this 15 minute chart. This is uh, halfway through the previous day. So as you can see, we had a pivot high here. So we right mouse click, we do decision point. Can you see how that area of resistance is on the chart? But more importantly, it's on the chart in advance. In other words, it's leading, it's there before the market even gets there. So if I turn trading mode off, I want to show you what happened yesterday. Basically, the yesterday the market went up. I'm just gonna take that maximum level off because we're not particularly looking at that we just want to use our typical area which is here can you see how the market went up and basically made the high of the day at that level in other words it, uh, it reversed perfectly at our anticipated resistance level so when you're on the shorter time frame chart when the market goes up into this uh, level that's when we're looking for uh, uh, potential uh, trades you can see we did have a VS sell there basically that wasn't filled for quite a few bars so when a market moves sideways like that on a VS setup you wouldn't uh, take it anyway because that's not the characteristics of a VS setup but in particular I want to look at a trade setup a bit later on here so I'm just going to go to that bar there and show you what this looked like at this particular point in time can you see how the market came in at our typical um, or our higher time frame DP resistance which was there, so that then nailed the high perfectly. The market was then coming down, made a corrective uh, swing. Our MTP trend agreed with this, was red. Everything came in to give you a clear picture. In other words, the market was doing what you anticipated. So this is when you can right mouse click over the red cell bar, do your analysis, and this looked like a very good potential trade setup. So if we move forward, you can see that you just have been clipped in. Do you see that? Just clipped in there. Then the market went down and went straight back up again and would have stopped you out. So this would have been a losing trade. Remember losses can and will and do unfold. I just want to set that to our normal 2% risk of a sample $20,000 account. So this would have been going short six contracts. So you would have actually had a losing trade. This is what I said at the start. Losses can and will and do unfold. The loss was kept small at 1R. The frustrating point is if I now turn training mode off, you can see the market then reversed sharply again and then went down exactly as anticipated on our higher time frame 15 minute chart. So even though the picture looked clear, you would have had a losing trade. That's frustrating. But the frustrating part is if I go over to the NQ, I do exactly the same analysis at the same time. I'll go out to the 15 minute chart. Um, again, we place our DP on the chart from the previous high or low. I'll just be using the typical one. And as you can see, that caught the very high of the day there. Do you see that? They came out, the, the uh, NQ made the reversal at the high absolutely perfectly, then started to come down. So now if we come down to our shorter time frame chart, we can see that we had, if I go back here, we had a an initial sell set up here, like the ES looked absolutely perfect, where there's the high, high time frame resistance. The market came down, made a TS3, W3, Wave 3 trade setup, at MTP, MTP trend was red. This again looked like a good particular trade setup. This was just clipped in as well and then just stopped out. So again, losses can and will and do unfold, but then gave you another potential sell setup. If we do analysis now, and now if I turn training mode off, can you see how this particular one then took you in? The market then moved sideways for a bit 
and then went down absolutely perfectly. In other words, this trade setup worked out brilliantly. At the first target, it would have been a profit of 6R or 6 times the initial risk. If you'd gone back out to your higher time frame chart, and remember we place our DPs on there in advance, so the higher time frame support zone would have been down here. Just take that one off. Would have been down here. So if I go back to the three minute chart, and we'd use that higher time frame support zone. Can you see how this sharp decline here came right down to this level before it then started to retrace back again? So if you'd used your higher time frame support zone to come out on your profit target, that would increase the profit to just over 15 times the initial risk. So this was the frustrating thing ab uh, about yesterday, and it's how markets sometimes unfold in that on the NQ, we caught the high, it came down, caught the low absolutely perfectly. You had one losing trade, yes, but then you had an absolutely brilliant profitable trade after that for a very, very nice high R profitable trade. But on the ES at the same time, you did actually have a, again, catching the high absolutely perfectly, but this time there was a losing trade and you would have ended up with a loss. So if you traded the ES, you'd have come out on the end of the day with a losing trade. If you traded the uh, NQ, you'd have come out in a profitable trade. So this is the frustrating things with markets. Sometimes, depending which market you're trading, you can come out with a good day. Other times you can come out with a bad day, even though your analysis turned out as anticipated on both markets. However, the good thing about the ES is a bit later in the day. Can you see we actually had a history triangle here? So if I go back and have a look at this, what the market was telling you at the time, it was actually giving you another sell setup, again in the larger degree downtrend. So if I right mouse click here, do analysis and move forward, you can see that would have take you in, taken you in, not quite stopped you out because it was a double top, that's why it was a history triangle. The market then carried on down in your anticipated direction like this for a 3 hour profitable trade. So even if you'd taken this losing trade earlier, that loss was kept small at 1R and this trade here would have been a profitable one at plus 3R. If you'd gone out and used your higher time frame uh, support, I'll take it off that last DP there, then the market never reached that. So you'd have been basically running this short trade into the close. So you've been running it basically down into the, there to the close, which would increase the profit to well, near a 5R. So can you see how that sometimes trading can be frustrating and that yes, you will make losing trades. Losses are an important part of trading because they should be kept small. But by using position sizing, the idea is that over time you have profits that are large, large not just in dollar values, but large in relation to the, um, the losses. In other words, a high R value in relation to the, uh, the small R uh, losses. And that's what uh, can be frustrating about trading sometimes. Sometimes you can have good Good days where the market works out as anticipated. Other days, like we have on the NQ with a very nice large profitable trade. Other days you can have losing trades that come through as well. So the markets can and will be frustrating no matter what trading approach you take.